Hello, this is a short movie showing Gel Pro Analyzer version 6.3 and how to analyze dot plots. The first thing we need to do is select an experiment. Typically, the experimental dialog will already be on the desktop when you launch Gel Pro version 6.3. If this is not open, you can simply go to the File menu and select Experiment to bring this dialog box up. It's possible, depending upon how many users you have, someone has unchecked this box where it showed to show this dialog at startup. Our next step is to choose what type of experiment we would like to run. In this case, we'll be doing plot dot plots, which will bring up the dot plot workflow toolbar. From here, we can choose to save this, this experimental setup after we're complete. You can enter in, give it a title, the person who did the experiment, and a brief description after we have our dot plot analysis completely set up and run, and we're satisfied with the settings, we can simply save these settings for later use for other dot plot experiments, or to recreate this particular analysis. The next step is to open up an image, in this case my dot plot example. You'll see how this is now activated. This is simply a workflow toolbar that you go that you work from going top to bottom. The first step if you choose to do so, or if need be, is to rotate the image. In this case, it's a little bit off-center, so we're going to rotate that. And you just need to line that up a little bit. And that's pretty good for a little more. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to close the original image, and let me press OK. So now that I've done that, the next step is to go to the Dots button. And this is where we're going to create our grid. There's two methods of creating grids to find our dot plots in Gel Pro. The first one, which is really the top of this dialog, is to find the dots and to automatically create a grid. The second version is to manually create a grid, and which is the bottom here. Let me show that one first, and then we'll go through how to set up it for automatic grid finding. First one is we want to tell it how many rows and columns we have. In this case, we have eight columns and seven rows. One thing that you should enter in is an approximate diam diameter of your dots. In this case, this is in pixels, and I simply press Make Grid. We're fairly close. Now, I can choose to make some adjustments and dragging this out. Uh, let's adjust that just a little more. Bring that up. Okay. Here we go. From here, we, we have a couple of settings to do. First one is, what type of background correction would we like to make? If we'd like to make background correction, which is available right here, background correction. If it's checked, it's going to be applied. And there's a few choices for outline, clear of the dot, close to the dot, or if you had some type of background, we can set the background dots. And press OK, and we're ready to go to our next step is to load a calibration table or curve or to create one. But first, when we delete all these, we go through to show how to set up an automatic grid finding. In this case, I want to set the parameters. I'm going to lock my dots. I'm going to show my labels. I'm going to do a background correction. Fill grid holes. In this case, what it's going to do is try to automatically find the grid and estimate the grid. I'm going to take off lot dots for a second. Find the grid and lay it down on top of the image. Wherever there are, this will force um, openings. If that misses some, it will try to fill in those spots. Let me take that off for a second. The other important thing is fixed threshold. This is where it's going to be. If you set it lower, it will actually it will find one here adjusting it, and you can see what I'm picking up on the image. Let me set that to around 10% to find my dots. Pretty good. Tell me the size of the dots. And I can also filter out, based upon the diameter, it will try to filter out incorrect dots based upon the size, in this case, the diameter of the dot. So I'm saying plus or minus 50%, so anything small will filter out, anything too large will filter out. And then we'll try to find the dots. In this case, you can see now it's automatically found the dots. 
It's done a fairly decent job. It's found eight rows by seven columns. I want to fill the holes and I will lock the dots. And there we go. Now that I've created my grid, you can see where it's in yellow highlighted where it had to place the dots. You can adjust the diameter if you need to, to make it larger. You can, depending upon your background question, you may want to have a clear area around the dot to actually calculate the local background from there. Once I'm done with this, I can press OK. And the next step is to, if you wish to, is to calibrate your sample. If you already have a calibration curve, you can choose to load that or create a calibration curve, in essence, by selecting dots and tell it the mass of each dot. In this case, I'm just going to continue with it, with our example here and not load one, I'm just going to uh, show without calibration for the moment. I can then calculate the mass or the integrated optical density. In this case, I'm just showing the raw intensity information. And then I can choose from show what I would like information I would like to display. In this case, for my rows and columns, I can show the integrated optical density of each dot. Let's switch that around. Oops. Show the integrated optical density. And from here, I can also export this information directly to Excel or save it as a table. A couple of other things, allow multiple calibrations, update sampling, and there's also some help files available for you. Once you're happy with this, you can simply press Save, which will bring up the Save Experiment dialog. I can have my information if I have already entered it, and then save that and recall for a later experiment. Thank you very much. For more information, please contact your media cybernetics dealer or your local sales office.